Good morning everybody from beautiful Utah. We're on our way up to uh, Colorado, to Grand Junction, to pick up a load. I have an empty flatbed behind me, and I'm ready to go as soon as this guy in front of me uh, gets out of the way. I'm not sure what he's doing exactly, but glad you joined me today. Don't forget to go down below. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. We make new videos every day. We've been traveling from Winnipeg, Manitoba, all the way down to Tonopah, Arizona. Delivered there yesterday. Now I'm on my way back up. Colorado at uh, Grand Junction there. We're going to pick up a load that's going to Banff, Alberta, and from there we'll probably make our way back home uh, to the Winnipeg area. Yeah, grab a seat. Let's enjoy the beautiful scenery of Utah together. parked here. I don't know if he's planning on getting back on the road or what's going on here. But I'm going to start making a move here because I'd like to get going. Is he just parking here like this or what? He's been here for quite a little while. Looks like he's about to get on the highway, right? Oh, now he's going to get on the highway. Okay. So as soon as the road is clear, we're gonna get on here. We stayed at this scenic little rest area. We're on Colorado, uh, or US 191 in Southeast Utah. Pretty busy highway, apparently. We got two more coming from our left, and then we can go. We got this guy and one more SUV. And it looks to be clear. at Interstate 70. We're going to take this east into Colorado. I have 
about 80 miles to go to Grand Junction. Hopefully no delays along the way. Don't got any time for delays today. Not yet anyways. Gotta get loaded first. Then I have a little bit of extra time to get up to Banff. I, I shouldn't have a problem getting up there. I think we're gonna do a Saturday delivery. Which is odd, but nice. Don't have to wait till Monday then. But I'll probably have to wait till Monday to get reloaded. I'm thinking they'll probably send me like Calgary or something to get reloaded. Who knows? Oh, no patience. No patience, huh? I don't know why they do that like that. If they don't want people to go over the lines there, they should put a barrier in there, right? People are gonna just drive right over. Continue on this road for 80 miles. We're in Grand Junction now. Uh, the next exit, I believe, is mine. Exit 31. Western U.S. is so beautiful. I always forget, and then I come out here, just, wow, the natural beauty mile, out here. Take exit 31, Horizon Drive and then, at the roundabout, take the first exit. Here we go. I am right on time. I'll be rolling in there, like, at 12.59. Gotta be there for one. At the roundabout, take the second exit. Okay, I've never been in Grand Junction before. Uh, I don't like these roundabouts because they're not made for big trucks. Well, they, they make them so your trailer can drag over the, the curb, right? But I don't like doing that. I was always taught not to drag my trailer over curbs. Now they're telling me I'm supposed to drag my trailer over the curb. Make it make sense. Any of you from Grand Junction? Any of you from Colorado? I'm not in Colorado that often. I don't come this way that much. My father-in-law, he comes through here all the time. My dad, he goes more uh, Eastern US, like Georgia area. And I'm sort of Midwest. In a quarter mile, turn right on G Road. G Road. Just G. They gave up on naming their streets. They just, one letter, G. In 700 feet, turn right on G Road. What kind of road is this going to be? G Road, that is that is what it says. All right. Somewhere down here is my uh, shipper. Oh, just 27, the number 27. They really didn't want to name their street. They don't give their... Oh, well, here's a street name, Gulfmore. I guess all the main drags are all numbers and letters. Turning off G Road onto 27 Road. Narrow road here. Yikes, where is this shipper? It's going to be tough for me to get around here. I'll get 
there yet. I don't know if I'll ever have a big house. I don't want to take care of such a big house. Such a big yard. I like where we are now. Let's be honest, my wife takes care of the house. But I live in it. Sometimes. On weekends. <laughs> I don't think she would want to clean a big mansion. We'd have to hire, if, if you're that rich though, if you, if you have enough money to buy like a massive, like 10,000 square foot house, H road. 10, 20,000 square foot house, like I'm talking big. If you have that kind of money, you also have money for like cleaners, I think. I mean, maids and uh, lawn care workers. If I ever got to that point, well then I'd be at that point, I don't know. I don't need that though. Be kind of cool, but all right. So my shipper's right up here. I'm gonna get my, my freight on the trailer. Turn right on H Road. H Road now. The letter H. Okay, Grand Junction. Very creative with your road names. All right. So wasn't quite what I was expecting, but I don't know what I was expecting because I had no idea what it was. But it wasn't this. I wasn't expecting that. So I got one reel up here and this. This up here is 13,500 pounds together. And the can back there is 12,000 pounds. So uh, they were gonna put more in the center here. This is, this is why we loaded it this way. They were gonna put one in the center, but we have a weight limit on how much they can load, which is different than the weight limit from the, the, the maximum. Usually I can put about 45,000 pounds on the trailer and be legal, but because of where I'm going in Banff, there's one bridge that has a weight limit on it. I believe it's uh, 60,000 pounds or 65,000 pounds. Either way, I could only put 28,000 pounds on my trailer. And so we got 12, and 13, and whatever that is there. And the other piece they had on would have put us over. So that spot in the middle there is just open. And I said, hmm, leave it, it's fine. I had already chained down this uh, can at the back here and we already weighed it all out. I'm all good to go. So I'm carrying more weight up on the truck than on the trailer. So I'm happy with that already. This is going to be a big parachute for me on the highway, uh, dragging me down and destroying my fuel economy, my good streak. But what can you do? It'll be fine. So I chained two chains on the back, crisscross again. Straps are there mostly just for show, but just for a little bit, just a little bit extra, just in case. This little piece here, we got strapped down there, it's all one piece. And this here, I've got two chains holding it there and two straps holding it down there. We're ready to rock and roll, we're going back to Canada. We're leaving Grand Junction, Colorado. Uh, it's about 1200 miles up to Banff from here. I'm gonna quickly swing in here to the pilot. I wanna get my walk-in for today because we didn't get our walk-in yesterday. So I don't wanna miss two days in a row. We have the time. I have almost two and a half days to drive, well, three days actually to drive two days worth. Uh, we got time for a walk today. I wanna take advantage of it. When you have the time, you go for it. We'll go check out Grand Junction. So I parked right over there at the pilot. There's another Loves right here. And I'm walking down this pathway, which goes under that intersection over there, which leads to a TA. So a bunch of truck stops all in this one little corner here. The thing about the US though is that, I see why they do it, but they put their truck stops in industrial zones, far away from residential zones, far away from commercial zones usually, like far away from restaurants and stuff, malls, entertainment. I get why. We're noisy. We stink. Don't want us around residential, commercial. I get it. But in Canada, a lot of the truck stops, a lot of the time, are like right in town, right in the city, where you can just like walk down the street and go to Applebee's or go to Montana's whatever restaurant you want. So that's really convenient. However, when I'm down here, 
there's nowhere to really walk. I go to the truck stop and I want to go for a walk, but there's nowhere to walk too, because you're in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a big industrial zone. So I make the most of it. And I found this sidewalk here. It leads me over to the other side of the industrial zone. At least they have this, right? Very often these neighborhoods or zones don't even have this. So I saw this on Google Maps. I was like, oh, I'm going to go check that out. At least there's somewhere for me to go, right? You yeah, guys know what I'm talking about, right? A lot of the truck stops, there's just... It's like middle of nowhere. There's absolutely nowhere else you can go. Truck stops I'm thinking of are sort of like the Husky in Mississauga. Most of the petrol passes in Canada. A lot of them seem to be right, like, just down the street from all kinds of different restaurants or a mall. Lots of things to do, places to go, you know? Things to see. It's a little bit windy here, so I apologize if there's wind noise. This is what I'm up to now. Making the most of where we are, getting my feet moving, getting my steps in. I felt bad about missing yesterday, but I told myself I can't expect myself to walk three miles absolutely every single day, all the time, because I'm a very busy guy. I would like that to be the case, but I would like to uh, at least commit to myself, you know. I try to at least walk five out of seven days. So two days of the week I can have off. The other days of the week, I just gotta find a way to make it work. It, it only takes an hour at my pace to walk three miles. So I just need an hour out of the day somewhere and some decent weather. But if the weather doesn't cooperate, then SOL. It's been such a beautiful trip beautiful weather. I couldn't justify not taking advantage of it. When I stop at the truck stop, I usually very often find myself just walking down an industrial street like this, which is fine. But I kind of like it, you know, those towns we stopped at on the way down to Arizona. I kind of like walking through the, way, uh, the residential zones when I can just to see yeah, see the kind of homes that are there. See people's yards. I'm 36 now, so the way people take care of their yards fascinates me. Some of them got really nice lawns. The ones in New Mexico had no lawns at all. No lawns. Can you imagine? What do you talk about with your buddies at Saturday barbecue if you can't talk about how good your lawn is? It'd be a whole different world, you know? One and a half miles, half done. So I'm just gonna retrace my steps all the way back. And that'll be three miles. So I've had my walk for today. I've had my shower for today and I'm fed. I'm ready to go. We have 1200 miles, like I was saying. Even if I would leave tomorrow morning from here, I'd have plenty of time to get there. But we're gonna leave now. I still have eight hours available to me that I can drive today yet. So I'm gonna drive as far as I want to, far as I can, I guess. And we'll park somewhere and then we'll drive a full day tomorrow and then there will be just like a half day left for us the following day easy little day make sure we get in there and it'll give us a bit of a buffer too just in case if something goes wrong gives us about a half day of, of uh, time and room to adjust if things go wrong uh, other than that yeah we'll be unloading first thing saturday morning and probably what i think is going to happen i'm thinking they're probably going to send me towards calgary to sit there until monday but uh, I have no idea. We'll see what happens. Let's get back out there, out there on the road. Bleh. <laughs> Having trouble talking. I'm tired. Physically tired, because I went for my walk. But I'm not tired mentally. Okie dokie. Artichoke. Let's go. We're going to fuel up north of Salt Lake City in Utah. That is my cheapest fuel on my way north. a couple hours from here. I think it's called Ogden. Ogden Flying J. Got a nice little bug right there on my on my windshield. Just to the left there. Sorry about that. It's on there good. It's coming with us. <laughs> so I'm on uh, I-70 westbound. We're in Utah again. 
I'm about to turn north at exit 157 onto US 6, US 191. That'll take us up towards Salt Lake City. Not sure how far we're going to make it tonight yet. I don't even know how far away Salt Lake City is. I'm just sort of I'm just going with it. Whatever happens, happens. i got lots of time. But uh, I don't want to drag my feet too much because I want to have time tomorrow to do a walk as well. That bug is really bothering me right there. Oh, I'll get used to it. I wish I had like a squeegee that I could reach around the windshield from inside. But the wipers don't do much. They just spread it around, right? You know what we need to do? We need to get Volstock to manufacture and create a washer fluid. The Volstock washer fluid. I should talk to them about that. Superior to all other washer fluids. You know, they can have a winter formula, an all-season formula, and a bug formula. Who knows? Maybe. That'd be awesome, because then you can just pull snot your windshield as you're driving. 1.5 miles. Take US 6 West US 191 North Price. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, if you're new to my channel, go down below to my description. Uh, the first couple of things, you'll see a link to Bullsnot. If you're in the U.S., go to brownox.com or uh, in Canada, bullsnotcanada.com. You'll, you'll see all the products I'm talking about. Great products. I use them on my truck all the time. And I know the company well. So, uh, if they made a bug wash, like a bug washer fluid, you can put right into your washer reservoir. Huh. <laughs> There's an idea. Oh, really, it's not that hard just to pull over and use some visible rocket spray. Just spray your windshield down and quickly squeegee it off. That's pretty quick and easy, too. Salt Lake City, Utah. Again, we haven't been here in a while. Exit 343, I-15 in Ogden, Utah. In 0 0.2 miles, keep to the right on. Rose light, UT-104 and then slight right in 430 feet. Here for my cheap juice. <laughs> here we are. Still have just about two or three quarter hours available to me. I might drive a little further. I'll take a look at how busy the this place is. It's probably filled up. You have trucks. arrived at your destination on the left side. Five J Travel Plaza. After I'm done fueling, I'll go see if there's any empty parking spots here. If there is, I might stay here the night. If not, well, then we'll just mosey on down the road a little further. See what we can find. Some Utah fuel. So I've got full tanks. I'm just going to do a quick circle around the lot here to see if there's any good parking spots. I doubt it. And if not, I have two more options down the road. There's a small truck stop that, according to Trucker Path, always has good parking. This is a smaller chain or smaller Ma and Pa truck stop. I guess people don't like stopping at those anymore. They like coming to these big chain ones. Uh, there should be parking there. And if that's full, there's another Ma and Pa truck stop up near Plymouth, Utah. Between Plymouth and Portage, Utah, up on, uh, what is it, the 15th, going up towards Idaho. That one, same thing. It says that there's always a lot of parking all hours of the night. It's just a lesser known truck stop, which I prefer to stop at those. But we'll just do a quick lap around the parking lot here to see if we can get lucky and maybe someone just pulled out. Snag ourselves a nice spot. I got my doubts.
figured it'd all be full by now. No problem. I have a backup plan for me. I still have lots of drive time available, so I'm not worried about going over my hours. safer to park in those lots especially if there's not as much traffic in there but the parking spots just look easier to get in and out of less chance that I'll get hit during the night somebody trying to park or leave so I'll head down the road I'll talk to you once we get there whichever one we stop at The first one had a spot for me. There's only one left, but it's mine. And this is what I meant by the parking lot is a lot safer. See there's a lineup of trucks along the back here and nothing in front of us. So people can take all that room up there to line up, to back in or to get out. We don't really have to worry about people hitting us or dragging their trailer over us. There's an Arby's in there. It's closed right now, but I think the convenience store is still open. This big lot, you see? Lots of space. And we took the last spot that was open. There might actually be one over there. Kind of regretting putting this can all the way at the back like this. It was my decision. They asked me how I wanted it, and uh, I wanted the heavier weight up front. And that reel is heavier than this can, believe it or not. So that is heavier up front. I wanted that on my drives, but uh, you know, this does create a huge parachute back here. Grabs all the wind and. Uh, well, I'm legal for weight, and that's where I told him to put it, so that was my choice. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I'm not perfect. I know, I'm looking at it now, I'm driving down the highway, and I've got this big parachute behind me. The wind all goes around my truck, right? And then it just goes in behind my load and just smashes against that, uh, that can back there. You know, it, the can is higher than my truck, so even if I had put it at the front of my trailer, the wind would go over my truck and still hit the top of it, but it wouldn't be as bad because it would just hit the top. So in hindsight, I probably should have put that can on the front and then put the reel behind that. Sure, I would have been pulling the weight and more weight would have been, or a few thousand pounds more would have been on my trailer tandems than my truck tandems, which would have made it for a bit of a rougher ride going over bridge connections and stuff. You always want to carry the weight. You don't want to pull it. You want more weight on your drives, on your truck, than on your trailer. It just smooths out the ride. It just makes it, gives it a much more natural feel. And that's what I was going for. And it rides great. Like that, for that, we got it perfect. It's a smooth ride, but uh, it's not very aerodynamic. And that's my fault. That's the way I told them to load it. And it's my fuel. So we're still doing pretty good on fuel. Uh, we filled up down in Ogden, and we're averaging 6.75 miles per gallon, which is still above average. So we're still doing really good. Uh, I think it might be the house that I've been treating my diesel fuel with. Uh, I've been treating, for the last five fill-ups, I've been treating my fuel. 
uh, with Howe's diesel uh, conditioner. And I really feel like that's really uh, brought up my fuel mileage, made my truck run smoother. I have to test it more yet, but so far I've been very happy with the results. And like I said, we've been doing phenomenal fuel economy on this trip. And uh, I would have to give credit to Howe's for that. Not just because they're friends of mine, but because it actually works. <laughs> I'm testing it out myself, and it's, it's actually working really well. So we'll talk about that more in the future as I continue testing. Tomorrow, uh, we'll head up to Banff. And I don't think my fuel economy should be affected that much. Uh, the air still, like the truck is still breaking the air for that can back there. Uh, it's just... It's hard. It's an open deck, right? So I don't always get those slippery, nice, perfect loads like I got all the way down to Arizona. Sometimes it's got all kinds of weird angles and edges and faces and backs. and It is what it is. The important thing is that we're legal. Uh, we're not overweight. We're not even close to being overweight. Uh, the weights are distributed in such a way that it's a very smooth ride. And we're still doing good fuel economy, so can't complain. Thanks for joining me today, everybody. <coughs> Tomorrow, I think we'll make it to Canada. I think we'll be able to get up through Sweetgrass, Montana into Coots, Alberta. We'll see where we make it to, though. It'll be uh, a full day of driving tomorrow. It'll be fun. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. I make a new video every day. We're on our trip from Winnipeg down to Arizona and then up to Colorado to Alberta. From there, I don't know where I'm going. I'm assuming I'll probably go east back to Manitoba, back home. But uh, we'll see what happens when I get there. Stay safe, everybody. Keep your stick on the ice, and that means pay attention out there on the roads. Keep your head up, and I'll see you tomorrow.